My name is not important. I just fucking hate the world and all of the worms feasting on its carcass. They don't deserve to live. And I'm gonna put a bullet in all of them because they smell of poo. Poopy poo poo and stuff. Oh, nothing is good. There's nothing but cold, bitter hatred in my soul. People are mean and, and sometimes I don't get the amiibo I want. And, and this girl once said something about a game that I liked and she didn't like it and I, I disagreed with her. So everyone's gonna die. I'm gonna blow up the world, I'm so angry. And, and, and this is ridiculous. I'm in the middle of a Mississippi summer wearing a trench coat and a heavy wig. This is, this is stupid. I drew a, a sad face on my forehead and that melted off. This is, this is ridiculous. Steam has finally, after many years, implemented a policy that covers a very bloody basic customer right, the ability to seek a refund. If I remember the endless grocery store adverts growing up in the 1990s, the idea of a no quibble money back guarantee has been around since, well, since I was growing up in the 1990s. But the world of digitally distributed games has worked hard against the idea. Though Garg and Origin have been pretty good about using some form of refund policy, there's no monetary recourse for those who've bought dress on Steam. Oh, at least until now, with Steam's new policy offering refunds for any reason, provided you played under two hours of it and request the refund within 14 days. Frankly, it's been a long time fucking coming and I couldn't be happier. Hell, just this week Silicone 2 was released on the Steam storefront, a game that literally does not work. You try and load the game and the engine stops working completely. It is thoroughly and utterly unplayable. And before now, there would have been no adequate way for those suckered into buying it to get their money back not without jumping through a lot more hoops and getting potentially snotty emails back from Valve. Now you can, and that's a very good thing. It's not so good for asset flippers, scam artists, bullshitters, liars and scumbags who abuse early access and steam greenlight, but the day I care about their financial security is the day Konami cannot be adequately summed up by a picture of a shit. Gone is the day where Digital Homicide can throw a cobbled together Unity asset ripoff on Steam, ridicule customers who bought it and complained, refuse to implement fixes that have given users actual motion sickness, and feel satisfied that they can just walk away untouched with the money. Gone is the day where some unlucky Steam user could buy something like Martial Law, which sold itself with dishonest trailers and turned out to be a load of sour chimp jism, and find no means of reversing the transaction. Do I think this will fix Steam? Absolutely not. Do I think this will stop amateur cobblers with delusions of grandeur or lying bullshit merchants trying to flood Steam with their sewer slurry? Nah, they'll keep pouring through those floodgates. But now game players have an actual recourse, and developers who give a shit are going to have to imply some actual customer service if they want to keep their cash. There is, quite literally, no downside whatsoever from an end user standpoint, and as far as I'm concerned, that is the utmost important thing. That said, I'm not insensitive to the concerns thrown up. There have been objections to the refund policy, and while a lot of the overblown criticisms make me laugh in a week where Silicon 2 has spunked itself out onto the internet, I do understand that some devs have not unreasonable worries. The most common fear is that the two hour time limit ignores the fact that shorter games are sold on Steam. Gone Home, Proteus, Brothers A Tale of Two Sons, even Valve's very own Portal are all shorter experiences with two or even less than two hours of raw content on offer. Fears range from customers simply feeling shortchanged and wanting their cash back, which to be fair, is not something you should stop a customer from doing if they feel that way, to more sinister concerns, such as users abusing the policy to get free glorified rentals or review bomb games they have a personal grudge against. To be honest, I'd prefer the two-hour restriction just be gone entirely. It places an emphasised value on time spent, which in turn reinforces the belief that pure hours are the only way in which a game can justify itself. As we discussed in our video on The Order, length is an important factor, but it's not the only one, and the current restriction makes it seem that way. I'd rather a seven-day money back guarantee in any situation, like most businesses, just even the playing field entirely in that way. We'll need to see the policy in long term action of course, but personally I really don't think the issue will be as prevalent as it's made out to be in the long term. Let's face it, with a game like Proteus, the only people who would ever seriously buy it would be a niche clientele anyway, and that niche is typically supportive of such games and wouldn't want to screw the artists behind them. Anybody who'd buy it insincerely for a refund after the fact 
probably wouldn't have bought it otherwise. So like piracy, it's hard to count it as a lost sale or anything like that. If they wouldn't have purchased it legitimately in the first place, you didn't really lose anything. Anybody up for habitually abusing the refund system probably would be more inclined to pirate games anyway. Seems a quicker and easier process than jumping through Steam's hoops and waiting an arbitrary amount of time to get the money back. Smaller games that break traditional norms have always had a cult appeal with small but passionately supportive followings. And I don't expect that will change. Hell, maybe the thought of a refund could make people less scared to try an experimental artsy game, and they might just be blown away enough to keep it. Removing the fear of losing money is a pretty big incentive if you want someone to spend money on your unknown weird thing. I see no reason to assume the people already buying the Proteuses and Sunsets of the world will suddenly turn nasty on the games they've been supporting. For those people who value a game only by the arbitrary amount of hours it takes to beat, I just don't think they're the audiences these games were going for anyway. So whether that sort of buyer seeks a refund or not, no money was really lost in the long run. The automatic adversarial fear of customers as potential scammers and cheaters is the kind of guilty until proven otherwise everybody's a potential pirate attitude so-called AAA publishers are guilty of. As for the worries that user reviews will be adversely affected by this, <laughs> have you seen Steam user reviews? They're already a mess. A game that users want to review bomb will get review bomb. Developers themselves abuse user reviews with positive reviews they wrote themselves or got friends to write while removing criticism and flagging negative reviews as spam. Joke sarcastic reviews are everywhere, to the point where the whole idea of Steam users curating their own content barely fucking works on Steam. Hell, that's its own issue, and not one I think refunds will be a big enough deal to exacerbate. More to the point, Steam's already pledged to tackle serial abuses of the refund policy, so at the very least we've got some assurance that Valve's keeping an eye on it. And if review bombing does spike thanks to refunds, a quick and dirty fix could be to flag reviews from refunded users, put them in their own section, or maybe in extreme cases delete them. That last one might be pushing it, but the fact remains there are ways for Steam to solve the problem if it becomes one. We have had a few cases of developers claiming abuse of the refund policy already. Notably, Quibu Games has come out to say that the policy is already hurting its studio, showing graphs that indicate that in the span of three days, 13 of 18 customers sought refunds. DSO Gaming suggests that gamers are being greedy and exploiting the policy already for free games. The trouble is, there's absolutely no evidence that these refunds are actually abuse. We frankly don't know what those stats really say about the customers, and comparing rate of refunds now to rate of refunds when it was really hard to get refunds is a significant skewing of the data. Maybe Quibu's Gravity Rush is good at attracting impulse buyers who now have a way to recant their impulses. Maybe these were customers who felt bolder about trying games out now that they know they can get their money back if they don't like the game. You know, what is clear is that although the game does have a very positive review score on Steam, rewind the video for thoughts on reviews overall, a lot of the most helpful reviews flagged are fairly negative and list a number of notable cons, pointing out that Quibu's game is a rather shallow mobile port, something many Steam users aren't fond of to begin with. The game's forum is also full of an inordinate amount of users looking to trade 50% off coupons, which goes back months. I'd love to know how long these people played the game for. Did they all skirt as close as possible to the time limit before returning? Did they all quote unquote beat it before returning? We don't know. We've got less than 20 sales in a handful of days without any other context or proof of long-term effect, and that's, well, fairly useless data really. It's evidence of nothing. Seems to me that Steam refunds are ripe to become the new piracy or used games, the new monster under the bed, where any instance of them will be counted as a lost sale, while any failures will be blamed entirely on the policy. In any case, of the indie devs I do know who have made shorter experiences, they've not reported anything that looks like abuse or any notably adverse long-term effects. The Charnel House Trilogy, a game I actually worked on in voice acting, full disclosure, is apparently doing just fine. Oh, and uh, I highly recommend it. Whatever the case may be, more time is simply needed. All these fears and graphs and accusations are treating refunds like they're in a vacuum and ignore any context or long-term figures. I wouldn't be surprised if it's some buyers just currently testing the water as well, trying this new thing out with games they wouldn't ordinarily buy. I think we really need at least several weeks, if not months, for anything to level out. Steam just announced something pretty unprecedented for its platform. I would not be surprised to see glaring spikes in refund rates swirl up at the moment, and I wouldn't be surprised if they even out once the concept loses its novelty. I have only one major misgiving about the whole thing. Steam's doing it, and Steam can find incredible ways to fuck up good ideas sometimes. Like the indie developers' fears, however, my own worries are vague and hypothetical, but I do have some suggestions that I think will make this policy work out for the best. 
Here's a TV that looks like an apple. Firstly, let's try not to have a uniform automatic process arbitraring the system entirely, please. I know it's tempting, but it's what led to devs abusing YouTube's copyright strikes and the shit wheel that is Steam Greenlight. Big services want automated systems running everything, and that's what leads to abuse. For the refunds to work in everyone's favour, there's gotta be some human oversight somewhere. A monumentous task, yes, but one that is important. We also need this policy to be mutable, flexible, and capable of nuance when situations arise. The two hour time limit is a prime example. Maybe not treat every game on Steam like it's automatically a 10 plus hour experience, and maybe tailor restrictions to fit games. Hey, maybe when it's an Ubisoft game, rather than give users just two weeks to seek a refund, give them six months to see if the fuckers will actually patch the inevitable litany of glitches that'll crop up. Here's a TV that looks like an apple. A fairly notable voice actor suggested that the refunds could cripple an already troubled industry somehow, but let's fucking face it, we're well past that point, and I think the blame is squarely on game sellers who have been allowed to run amok and churn out shit without regard for quality, while customers have absolutely no avenue for recompense. With this policy, a policy that frankly I'd have been happy with without any minimum gameplay restrictions, people finally have that avenue, and I think that's only bloody healthy for the game industry. It empowers the customer and thus emboldens them makes them potentially less averse to trying games out, which is a good thing for developers overall. And it lets us revoke our cash if we end up buying something shady, sleazy, broken, or shite, which is a bad thing for shitty developers. Which is a good thing for everybody, because fuck shitty developers, and fuck Chariot Wars. And frankly, if you've played even just 10 minutes of Chariot Wars, let alone like two hours of it, you deserve a fucking medal, much less a refund. So anyway, that's my video on uh, the Steam refund process. Uh, generally very, very, very in favour. Uh, I understand that some people are going to be uh, upset about it, some developers, but uh, at the end of the day, the customer's got to look out for the customers, and having a basic consumer right uh, isn't a bad thing for them. Uh, it is actually a very basic right, and something tells me if this refund policy had been there from the start, uh, no one would have a problem with it. Uh, so really, it's all right. It's, <sighs> it's so hard. It's so hot. I... Hold on a minute, I'll... Uh... Uh... Thank God for me. Uh... 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 Hello. Just hating the world. <laughs> Ooh.